Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. If you don't already know, my name is Tanya and I like to talk about everything to do with beauty. And today I'm really excited to do a first impressions of the Ala Cosmetics sponges. Now, you guys know that I don't normally like to do first impressions because sometimes when you're doing first impressions, you know, it can seem really great and fantastic and wow at the time and I think it's mainly because you're so excited to use something new that the hype is like right there. But generally when it comes to sponges and stuff like that, I've used enough to know pretty much straight away whether I'm going to love it or whether I'm going to hate it. Now, I've used multiple sponges in the past like I've just said, but today I want to try the Ella Cosmetics one. I have recently tried the, well in the past I have tried the, um... Eco Tools Miracle Complexion Sponge. I didn't like it. I've tried the Juno & Co Fuzzy Blue Sponge. Absolutely hated it. Um, the only sponge that I've really sort of gotten along with in the past and still love today, like really loved, is this, um, mm, what is it called? My brain is just not working. Um, Eco Tools is my Eco Tools sponge. Now, she's She's not long due to the bin, so I thought, well, I know I love this sponge, and everybody has been going on about the Ella Cosmetics, and I thought, well, I'm going to give it a whirl, because I don't want to pay $30 for a actual beauty blender, and they reckon that this is the next best thing, and for $30 you get two, whoops, $30 you get two, um, a lot of the time they'll have specials on as well, so, um, yeah, if you want to see my first impressions of this, Keep watching. Well, welcome back guys. Alright, so let's get started. Like I said, we're talking about the Ella Cosmetics sponges. Now, I want to give you an example. This is a sponge when it's dry, the Ella Cosmetics sponge when it's dry. And this is what it looks like when it is full of water and squeezed out. So, um, other comparisons that I will give you is, um, as I said, I have the Eco Tools one which I've put water in. Now please excuse the grubbiness. Um, so that's what these two look like side by side when they've both been filled with water. And then the Real Techniques. So hang on, I'll show you side by side. So there we go there. If we can just do that a little bit better, Tanya. So all three of these, they're, um, they're pretty similar, but in the way of feeling, like this um, Real Technique one, it's it's really uh, springy. I mean, it's soft, but it's really it's really springy. Whereas this one's more like soft marshmallow. And although um, it feels very very similar to my Eco Tools, yeah, my Eco Tools sponge, it's still softer. So it'll be it'll be very very interesting. I'm very excited to try. So all right. It's pretty simple. Um, what I'm going to do is somewhat of a little bit of a chatty sort of get ready with me. Um, nothing really too dramatic or anything like that. And um, let's see how she goes. And like I said, I'm pretty much going to know almost straight away whether I like it or not. So I'm not going to be doing anything super spectacular, you know. Um, yeah, let's just get some hair out of the way. And I can't find my other headband. So we are going to have to go with the Body Shop Deer. I think it was a deer one, I don't know, but anyway, let's, let's put some ears on, get the, and that should do it, get the hair out of the way, ah, alright, so I'm pretty much going to be using the same products that I used in my, um, get ready with me the other day, so like I said, there's nothing really too special there, um, I will mention that, um, when you do get the uh, sponges, like I said, it's uh, $30, I believe. I'll make sure all the details are down below. $30 and you get the two sponges. Um, they also send you out a little thank you note that basically says, thank you, we know that you'll fall in love as soon as you try them. And a little personal uh, note for me. But also says that they'll give you 15% off with your next order if you take a photo with the sponges and um, tag them. So... That's fantastic, and I'm definitely going to do that. So let's just stop talking and get started because we do not want this to be an hour-long video. Now, I have not put moisturiser on, so um, let's get that all out of the way. I am just going to use Old Faithful, which is my Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturising Lotion Plus. So let's just get that on. And da -da -da. Now... It'll 
be interesting because when I used the um, Juno and Co um, microfiber sponge thing, the fluffy one, it sucked out all of the moisture out of my foundation and just left me with sort of like this crusty, dusty pat. Like it, it was like I used a powder foundation. It was absolutely horrendous on me. And um, I have dry skin, and I'm wondering whether um, whether that was the case. Like because I have dry skin, um, that it didn't work. I wonder if um, other dry skin sufferers have tried the uh, microfiber uh, sponge from Juno and Co. And, and whether they've been successful with it. Because I've tried using it almost every single way, and I just it just doesn't do it for me. And that goes the same with the. Um, with the Real Techniques one, I just don't know what it is about. Not only can I not get the thing clean no matter what I do, um, it just doesn't seem to really blend my foundation as flawlessly as I would like. Uh, not as good as my Eco Tools one. And um, yeah, so I'm, I've got high hopes for these Alice sponges. So let's just put on some primer, which you guys know that I use the Hangover uh, Hangover primer. So nothing really new there. Stick that on because I want to give this sponge as equal opportunity as every other sponge that I have used. So let's not change anything. And I have some blemishes to cover up today too. I'm not actually going out anywhere again. I do have my cousin coming over with her little baby boy. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm really not going to be doing anything dramatic with makeup like I said just before. I just wanted to get this video done because I received them in the mail yesterday and I know there's a million and one videos out there about these sponges but I just want to do my own so all right ah uh, foundation I have three foundations and I don't know which one I want to use today I have the L'Oreal True Match Super Blend Foundation which I think might be a little bit dark for me at the moment. I have the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour full coverage foundation which is what I have been wearing and I have the L'Oreal Paris 24 hour infallible pro glow. I think what we'll do is I'll stay with the Maybelline 24 hour full coverage because that's what I've been using lately in my videos and like I said I want to sort of really straight stay true to um, test out this sponge as good as I can and I know what to expect out of this one. I think I've got a cat hair on my face, which is really weird because I don't have any cats inside. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Weird. Okay, anyway, there we go. So let's put our foundation on. Give it a bit of a shake. Ooh, looking forward to this. Now, should I do a side by side? Like, no, you know what? I am just going I know what my other sponges do. So I'm just going to give you a first impressions with a full face using the Ella Cosmetics sponges. So that's what I'm going to do. And where's my trusty mirror? All right, guys. I'm going to put it on dot my foundation on cuz I don't generally like to put it straight on this sponge. I might put a little bit on. All right, let's try that. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's very, very soft. I can say that straight away. Feels really, really nice, actually. Yeah, I'm loving the feel of this. It's nothing like the Real Techniques. Um, it's nothing like the Juno and Co. Um, it feels a lot like my um, Eco Tools sponge, but softer. It's got a cooling effect too. I don't know whether it's just because the water inside of it is cold or... Oh, look, I'm ghost-faced again. Um... I'm going to take a little bit on my sponge. I've got a blemish right here if you can see it in the mirror. Oops, see it in the mirror. I'm just... See if I can just build it up there a little bit. Like I said, I'm not too stressed because 
I'm not actually going out anywhere today. Um, yeah. Well, first impression, guys, I am really loving the way that this sponge applies foundation. So, I look really bright in the camera. I hope that's not what it really looks like, because to me, um, look, uh, this foundation's a little bit light for me at the moment, but I'm in that awkward stage where um, I've either got to mix two foundations together to get my perfect match or I've just got to deal with one or the other. And I would prefer to go lighter than darker because I know that if I really need to, I can darken up my face with bronzers and all that sort of stuff. So, um, But it looks alright, yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Feels great. I'd love to know what it's going to be like to wash out because um, my Eco Tools one I can wash out perfect. Um, whether that's using soap or an actual sponge cleaner. So let me just have a real quick look. It did really, really nice. I really like that. So yeah. Alice sponge just ticks the box for me. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's, um, like, something that I've never seen before. It's, it's pretty much on par to my Eco Tools, but, hmm, I mean, yeah, I really enjoy it. I really like what it's done. I mean, it soaks up about the same amount of, um, foundation as any other sponge, so, um, you're not going to get anything special there. Alright, well, let's put on some um, concealer. Where's my concealer? Let's put on some concealer and um, see how it blends that, shall we? Alright. We're going to use the pointy end this time. That is so much nicer around the eyes. It's, it's, I mean, it's even better than my um, Eco Tools one because my Eco Tools has a flat um, wedge type, if you can sort of see that. And I mean, that's great, but it really doesn't get right in the corners of the eyes. And I've got sort of like sunk in eyes, sort of like deep set eyes. And it can be really, really annoying. Oh, and it gets perfect in the nose area. Yep. This deserves the hype that it gets, in my personal opinion, guys. And um, when you break it down, it's $15 per sponge. My Eco Tools is $10, and that's on special. So realistically, the prices are pretty, not that far different. Um, I would rather pay, I mean, for sure, I would rather pay $30 for two sponges than $30 for one. Um, and this is doing a flawless job, like, I'm really, really impressed. Yeah. That just blended out seamlessly. I love this. I am not unhappy about my purchase at all. Yeah, what can I say? fan freaking tastic I have a new favourite, so look out, Eco Tools. Um, I don't take in the fact that my face is really really white but this sponge beautiful like as I said this is a first impression and generally I don't normally go by first impressions but I'm comfortable by telling you guys that I've tried a lot of sponges and you can tell pretty much straight away whether you're gonna love or hate a sponge and um, generally the only time or the only reason why we'll continue to use a sponge that we don't like is because we're hoping to find that magical, miracle um, way to use it, you know, because you spend money on something, the last thing you want to do is go and throw it out, you know, you have to try it more than once if you don't like it, but I can tell you right now that if I'm doing my makeup, um, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to grab this over my Eco Tools, so guys, I think I have a brand new favourite, I'm going to continue to do my makeup, if you want to sit here and watch the rest of this, uh, whatever it is that I choose to do, which is completely, I have no idea, then go for it, but my first impression is, is that I freaking love this. 
all the details that I'm going to have for you, the price where you can get it, anything else that I can tell you guys is going to be listed below. So if you came just to find out what the first impressions was of this Ella Cosmetic Sponge, I love it, okay? I love it, and you're going to find a lot of other people love it too. I cannot compare it to the Beauty Blender, I can only compare it to these other two here, and the Juno, which I've since given away to somebody else, who, mind you, loves it. Um, this just works better for me. I have dry skin, actually very dry and dehydrated skin. Love the sponges, guys. Um, yeah. But for anybody else who just wants to hear me ramble or see how badly I can do my makeup today, go ahead, stay here, and, um... <sighs> Let's see if we can do something with this today. I don't really want to do too much, but like I said, I look as white as a ghost. So I am going to have to do some um, bronzing. Now, last time I used this body, bron uh, body butter bronzer, and I think I kind of went a little bit too, too dark. So do you know what? I think today I want to see whether I can make it a little bit better with this Body Shop um, Honey Bronzer, I think they call it. Let me see. Just give me one minute. Now they just call it the um, bronzing powder, but I'm pretty sure it's it's called the honey bronzer or something. And I have the shade 01, which is a uh, light, yeah, light matte. And uh, like, yeah, well, as it says in the name, it is a matte formula. So let me get my trusty brush and um, see what we can do here. So just going to put a bit on there, tap off the excess and just try and warm the face up a little bit. Now this is not an excessive, I shouldn't be able to go too dramatic with this bronzer because it really isn't that sort of bronzer. It's, I just want to add a little bit of warmth to the face and um, without looking like it's on purpose. So let's do that. Now guys, I can never get away with using natural light, and so I try and mimic it as much as I can, but um, as some of you are still aware, I'm still trying to set up my recording area and my lighting and everything like that, so, um, I mean, I'm not exactly a beauty guru, I just love playing with makeup and everything like that, and if you can learn something from me, that's absolutely fantastic. But, um, yeah, so, as I said, my cousin's coming around today with her baby boy and he is absolutely gorgeous and he's the happiest child you've ever met um so that should be fun and um yeah don't know what else to say really i mean <sighs> we the last time we caught up was at my nana's funeral just recently and i mean obviously funerals aren't great and without wanting to put a damper on this video i still haven't really fully recovered from the funeral myself and um so just sitting here talking with you guys is quite nice, so a bit of a distraction I guess. Um, looks like it's a little bit warmed up. Just make sure it's a little bit blended out. Just going to put a little bit under just to hide my double chin that I have acquired <laughs> because of my love of pizza and squirms. That will do. Yeah, I don't want to put too much on because I am going to put a bit of blush on, which always deepens it just a little bit anyway. Looks to me like it could be alright. Now, I think of the other problem that I had last time is, is that I went straight in with the body, um, br uh, the butter bronzer, and uh, without putting any sort of like um, powder underneath, and uh, I didn't tap off the excess, which meant that all of it sort of just concentrated on one spot and trying to buff it out just wasn't working. And um, I've been trying to avoid putting excess powder on my face if I can. Um, the only time that I'll generally do it is if I want to try and avoid um, any of the uh, concealer sort of building up in the fine lines under my eyes. Because I am 33, I do have lines under my eyes. I can't get rid of them, so the only thing I can really do is try and brighten it up. And um, yeah, so... Let's see, we're going to go in with some... What did we use last time? We used the Manica Da, didn't we? I don't want to use the Manica Da today. I want to use a different um, blush today. Let me see what I've got. Hang on a minute. So I have two other blushes, I've only got three blushes at the moment, and I have an Ofra blush, which is in the colour 
candy apple. Um, well, you can't really see that. And I have this Rimmel one, which I actually think is a discontinued shade. I can't tell you what it is because the sticker's been ripped off on the back because they had one of those um, alarm system type of stickers. I hate those. So, you know what? Let's go with the Ofra one today. We're going to go with Candy Apple, which I probably would assume would be an okay shade for the colder weather um, in Australia. We're getting into some of the colder weather now. So, let's see if I can get this out without breaking her. Oh, she's a pretty shade. Let me see if I can show you guys. Ooh, don't fall. Alright, there you go. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. But she is a pretty shade, so let's stick some of her on. Ever so slightly. Oh yeah, ooh, she's pigmented. She is pigmented. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, Candy Apple is a very good name for this. Guys, I'm going to have to blend this out really, really well. Look at that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, all right. So, less is more when it comes to this product, guys. Uh, if you're going to put it on, definitely tap. All right, let's see if we can do this side a little bit better. Like I said, she's definitely pigmented. Oh but it's definitely better than that side. All right, all right. I'm gonna have to get a big fluffy brush, guys, and just try and buff that out as much as we can without lifting the foundation underneath. Ah, oh, come on, off, 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 off. Oh, yeah, it's starting to look a little bit better. That's a little bit more subtle. I mean, obviously it's still there and it is still Pretty bright for me. Um, mm. Yes, you're gonna know I'm wearing blush today. Uh huh. All right. Anyway, let's move on. It's a beautiful shade, but it's very pigmented. So guys, if you get this, just be very, very careful with it. Unless you like that definite wearing blush look. Um, I do like that shade though. Very, very gorgeous. All right, so what are we going to do next? We're going to do a little bit of highlighter. Hmm. Because I'm not really going out anywhere today, but you know what? I love highlighter, so let's do a little bit of highlighter. What have we got? Rose quartz. I don't really think that I want to put any more um, pink on with this. So we might go with just the vanilla quartz from Becca. Because that's what I have at the moment, this beauty. All right, so let's put a little bit of this on. Time to sparkle. All right, so just a little bit. Oh, yep, we're sparkling. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. We're definitely going to sparkle today, so. I'm not mad. Bit on the nose, just because. Bit on the cupid's bow. That will do, yeah. Alright, like I said, I don't want to go too intense. I think I've already put on more than I really needed to. But, um, whatever. Now, story for you. The other day, well, let's go back a few weeks ago. I finally uh, brought my first lipstick from Colourpop, right? They had a free shipping to Australia, and so I didn't have to spend, you know, seventy dollars Australian to get free postage. So I, I saw the um, Belle um, lipstick in the Princess uh, limited edition range, and I'm like, I have to have it, and I brought it. And you know, I have never gotten excited about one piece of makeup before. I mean, not like ecstatic, like I brought it and I loved the first one. Usually I'll buy a shade of something and I'll be like, I love the formula, but I don't usually love the color or something. You know, you get what I'm saying, right? And um, this one I put it on and I loved the formula. I loved the color. I loved the way it looked on me. I loved the fact that it was Belle. And I loved the fact that it was ColourPop and it was my first thing. And I was so freaking excited when it came and I treasured it and I wore it and I bragged about it on social media. I loved it and I decided that I was going to wear it to my Nana's funeral because I thought, you know what? I, I wanted to look good, not necessarily for her, but I just wanted I just wanted to feel comfortable, I just wanted to be myself, and I, I wore it, and I don't normally put lipsticks in my handbag, but I did, 
and um, so I had it in my handbag and we came home and I just threw my handbag down because normally I don't have to worry about it because there's nothing really in there that my two-year-old can get to and I turned around for what was probably maybe two or three minutes to do something and he comes up to me and he goes, Mummy! And there was reddish browny sort of brick colour all over his hands, all over his face, all over his shirt. I turned around, it was all over his toy box, it was all over my couch. I'm like, and I, I couldn't figure out what it was. We're like, what what would this be? Because it looks different on the lips than it does just like swatched on your hand, right? And and because I don't normally keep my lipstick anywhere except for in my room up high away from him, I'm like, what did you get a hold of? What is this? And then I saw the tube in his hand. It's this beautiful sort of rosy gold, well not rosy, but this goldish sort of packaging. And I'm like, oh, no. And the look on his face, like I was just standing there frozen, like trying to figure out what am I going to do? Like uh, I've got to clean it off him obviously, but like my devastation that he'd gotten it was so, I was just like, ah, oh, eh. he killed it, he killed it. Anyway, look, there was like this little nub left and I'm like, I'm going to cherish you. And I put it away and I thought, I'm going to keep the packaging anyway because I absolutely loved the packaging. It's got all the signatures of the Disney princesses on it and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And, um, and I got over it pretty fast, but it, I did really, really enjoy it and I was pretty devastated. And... Um, Obviously, I've been I've been trying to find a way to get it again, and I didn't really try that hard because I just thought nobody's going to be selling it on eBay or anything like that, and I didn't want any knockoffs. So I thought, well, bugger it, I'll just I'll just wait, and hopefully they don't discontinue it in the meantime, and I'll wait for another free postage sort of day, and I'll get it again. Um, but I wasn't confident that I was ever going to get it again because I don't know how long they keep limited edition stuff around for, right? And then all of a sudden in the mail the other day I get a package and my partner's like, you got a package? I'm like, nice, right? Didn't know what it could be and um, I get it and it's in this little sachet and I don't recognise the name on the back of the company on the back um, but it's addressed to me and I'm like, I didn't order anything. I didn't, no, not right? And I open it up and she slides out and I'm like, what? I look on the package again and I'm expecting to see Colourpop, maybe, you know, I did tag them in a post saying, oh no, look what my son did, right? And I thought maybe they had sent it to me, like, you know, because sometimes companies do that, you know, not that I was expecting it, but I'm like, no, and I'm like, well, hang on, I've, I've only got 47 followers at this current time, and I, I'm like, no, 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 it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like any subscriber sort of you know, mail or anything like that, would it? And I'm like, jeez. So I went out to the lounge room and I spoke to my partner and I'm like, look what came. And I sort of looked at him and he got this, this little twinkle. And I'm like, did you do this? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, ah, friggin' awesome. Absolutely awesome. I was ecstatic. Like, he's so good like that, man. He's so good like that. he will just blow me away. He won't, ah. Uh, Look, anyway, I am wrapped. That is what I'm going to wear today because I'm so, so excited. So I will open her up for you guys and give you a little look. Look, I'll give you a little bit of a swatch too. But like I said, it's um, it's not a very good swatch. Hang on. It doesn't transfer very well on the hand as it does to the lips. And I personally, I look, I don't know whether this suits me or not, but I know I love it. So I don't care what other people think whether things suit me or not. Now I have lipstick on my hand. Just give me a minute, I need a wipe. So, that was a lot of rambling with no actual makeup applications. So, let's get back into putting some makeup on because like I said, my cousin's gonna be here any time and I've gotta get this video done. Um, because I don't want her sitting out there doing absolutely nothing. So, right, so we've done bronzing, we've done, um, blush, we've done highlighter. Oh yeah, the settling down just a little bit. I could be blended out just a little bit more if you ask me. I think that bronzer is quite nice. So we're going to do eyebrows. Alright, so you guys know that I like the e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. 
I'm going to use that again today. I'm not going to go too drastic with it. I just want my eyebrows to be visible. So let's just fill them in and shape them just a little bit. Not too much though. I don't really like that sculpted look. I just want them to be visible so I don't look stupid, you know. I have this little um, wrinkle, I guess. It's just above the arch of my brow. So when I arch it a little bit, I don't know if you can see it or not. It looks like I've actually drawn like my eyebrow too high. It's a real pain in the butt. And then underneath it, I've got this stupid scar. So if I, if I under pluck it, I mean, sorry, if I over pluck it, you'll see this bright little round scar bulging out and it's just an absolute pain in the butt. So trying to sculpt my eyebrows can be very tedious. Alright, that will do with that. I may actually put a little bit of um, my L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper on it, just to define them a little bit more. But like I said, I'm pretty much keeping it low key today. I just thought I'd do this because it made me feel really, really good the other day. And I don't know if many of you actually watch this, and that's okay. But, um... I'm calling it my therapy at the moment, so you've got to do what works for you. Whoops, that may be just a little bit more defined than I like them, but hey, let's go with what we've got, okay? Because we're not starting again. <sighs> All right, now, ice. What am I going to put on there? Not really anything too dramatic, like I said. Um, Look, you know I've got a one and done shade, and I... I did that last time. I don't know what to do this time. I've got, well, we could stay with the theme of Colourpop. I do have Colourpop. It's my pleasure palette, and it's got some beautiful colours in there. Um, I haven't really made, found a way to make it work for me, so let's just see if I can do something really, really low-key with it. I'm going to use a shade called Pretty Cruel, which is, oops, which is this one right here, and, um, got a little bit of sparkle in it. Uh, let's see if I can just give you a little bit of an arm swatch there. So that's the colour I'm going to put all over my lid and I'm just going to sort of blend it out, see how she goes. So like I said, I'm not going anything crazy today. Just, woo, she's got a lot of kick up. All right. Hmm, I'm a little intimidated. All right, let's just dot that there and then just start blending. Whoa, she's pigmented. Wow, okay, it was a little bit plummier than I thought it was going to be. Um, wow, okay, alright. Hey, I don't hate it, but I'm actually really, really worried about how much I've got on there. I might actually just dab some over here, just to get rid of that excess product. Wow, that had a lot, a lot. I was expecting probably to get that much when I got that much, so alright. Let's dust this out a bit. Might actually grab another brush just to buff that out a bit, something that doesn't have any sort of colour on it. So, uh, I don't like to go too dark on my eyes because they're um, they're deep set and um, oh my gosh, what's it called? I've got this protruding upper eyelid sort of thing. I can't even remember. I can never remember what it's called. Um, I find it quite difficult. Um, to actually have shadows sort of show, show up on me unless I close my eyes, so. Alright, let's go one itty bitty dip and tap and go back into this side. Just bring that up a little bit so you can see the shadow when I'm, when I have my eyes open. It's a pretty colour. Whoa, don't bring it up too high. Alright, I don't really have anything to sort of buff it out with, which annoys me a little bit because they're all pinkies oh like, don't get me wrong it's a, it is a pinky purple palette right but i would have really liked there to be um 
a lid shade to sort of buff it out with. So I might grab my um, I Heart Revolution palette and just grab that Prevail shade right here that I always use and I will just blend that colour out on the lid a little bit so it's not so aggressive. I want to try a lot more from Colourpop. I hear their super shock shadows are great. Their liquid lips I would love to try. And I want to get the um, the Fame eyeshadow palette. I'd love to try that. And I'm going to get, um, when well, I can afford to, I want to get the um, Frog Super Shock Shadow, I think it's called. Yeah, it's like a pinky sort of colour. So yeah, um, let me see. Yeah, look, I'm not going to deepen that any further. I'm not going to define it any further. I will put a little bit of highlighter on the inner corner of my eye, which I normally do with the Vanilla Quartz Becca, um, just because I like it to pop just that little bit. Um, so let's do that with... Where? I need a new brush. I need a new brush. This one here, just an itty-bitty brush. And let's get some on there. Just in there, bring it out a bit. Actually, you might use a different brush. Need something just a little bit bigger. Uh, is that too big though? Nah, should be right. Not going anywhere too much. Bring that up just a little bit. Yeah. Actually, that's better. I'm bringing it into the shadow. Might actually do that a bit more. Just bring it into the shadow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, um, let's put a bit of mascara on. Just, I want to wrap this up in case my cousin rocks up. I'm using, once again, the Better Than Sex Too Faced Mascara because I love it. I want to try the Benefit Roller Lash, so um, I heard some really good things about it. If you tried it, you let me know down below whether you think it's any good or not. Um, I like sort of like in between a wet and a dry sort of formula, um, but it has to be lengthening and volumizing. You know, I don't just like one or the other. I love a really full, thick lash. You know, I see so many people bragging about the um, Essence mascaras, you know, our cheap $4 Essence mascaras, and I've tried almost every single one of them, and I can't stand them. Like, some of the Americans are absolutely obsessed with them, and I'm like, really? Hmm, I must be using them wrong. I just can't make them work for me. They're clumpy, they flake everywhere. Then again, when I first brought this, the first time I tried this, I hated it. I hated it. That's why you've always got to try things more than once, guys. Give it a chance. Some things work better after the first couple of tries. Well, once you get used to applying them, you know. I've learnt that with some um, eyeshadows. They're not all made equally. Some of them you have to really work differently, you know. So... You know, what, I don't actually need the ears on now that um, I've done the now that I've done the um, base. All right, so what are we gonna do? Uh, I think we'll just hit the lipstick. So this is Belle from ColourPop. It's a limited edition. It's a oh, what do they call it? Um, I might say I'm here. No, I think they call it a luxe lipstick. Absolutely love it. Love, love, love. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I've never really been great at putting on lipstick, and um, I don't think I'll ever be great at putting on lipstick, but I love this colour, and I want to call it like, it kind of almost looks like a movie brick reddish kind of colour, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's like a brown with a bit of purple in it, it's, it's the weirdest um, combination, but I just love it, it makes me feel great, so I don't know. Anyway, oh, that's pretty much all I'm doing today. I don't love the eyeshadow look. I don't think it's really completed. Um, and I do still feel quite ghostly, so I don't know how well um, that bronzing sort of went with me. So, um, yeah. But anyway, look, the whole point of this video today was to talk about the Alice sponges. And I can tell you that even now, like I'm looking, I haven't even um, done what I would normally do, and that is spray my face with some sort of like um, uh, fixing mist or, or something like that. And normally when I would do that, everything would sort of melt. So you know what? Let's not stray away from what I would normally do. Like I said, uh, look, I already like the look anyway. So we're gonna we're gonna just put it to the test. So here we go, spray. And as you guys know, I normally grab the sponge and just sort of melt everything in together. I've never found that it lifts any product. I mean, maybe it does, but I find doing this just sort of blends everything in, gets rid of that powdery, crusty sort of look, and um, yeah. That's my finished look for today, guys. Like I said, not doing anything special. I just wanted to record that video about Alice Sponges. And, um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed um, what you saw today, go ahead, give me a thumbs up. Let's other people see the video. And, um, yeah, so um, I guess I'll see you guys next time. I've got quite a few new videos coming up for you, so I've just got to get around to recording them because I don't have a backlog of videos like everybody else. So bear with me they're coming i've got some empties to show you i've got some masks coming out face masks eye masks ah uh, i got a ton of videos i've got to get up but i've got to pull my finger out and actually do them so um thanks guys for sticking around if you did and um yeah see you in my next video bye